can't even close the door without just about falling down. What is up, guys? Welcome to uh, a snowed out track day. The RX-8 made it up here on the trailer. Apologize for the wind noise. If there is any, I'll try to protect the camera for this little clip. Made it up here. It's ready to rip. I didn't film anything of tidying it up last night, but I got it all tidied up last night. Fixed the oil leaks. Made sure that everything was ready to rip. And uh, the track day got canceled for today. So I'm not a big do the whole weekend track event thing, um, which is like two track days, Saturday and Sunday. So my track experience for this weekend has been postponed because they're rescheduling the Saturday dates. Um, no big deal. I was happy to have driven up here as early as I did because everything got real icy after the snow kind of melted off. So there's a bunch of accidents. So definitely say some prayers for the guys um, involved in those accidents and mad stoked this guy over here in this blue c7 rolled in about an hour ago just spinning all over the parking lot which is like starting to thaw out now but it's definitely a sheet of ice everywhere still and uh mad props for him to drive in it because i wouldn't have driven my corvette today that's why we have the rx8 and the corvette can stay home every now and again not that i don't drive my vet but with that guys we're gonna appear back at the shop in the house and I'm gonna take a nap oh my gosh all right so we're gonna appear back at the shop and uh, I'm gonna take a quick nap at the track and let some of the snow melt because I don't want to crash my truck on the way home and uh, and then we'll assess the RX-8 and hopefully tomorrow which is in a second for you guys we're going to take the RX-8 for some good rips on the street and try to make up for not having the track day. It should be like 70 and sunny tomorrow. So, stupid fluke, Bob Cyclone, snowstorm coming through and ruining my day. Alright guys, good morning. It is officially the next morning from yesterday where we were at the track and it got snowed out. There's still snow on the ground. And a beautiful sunrise happening over here. We crest this little hill, you'll be able to see it. But, we're going back to the track. Uh, most of these local track days are like a two day thing, so you can go Saturday or Sunday, or both. I typically only go for one day, because two days at the track is just like a lot of time away from the ranch doing stuff, so I was able to finagle my way into switching my Saturday track day day to the Sunday track day day, so now I'm headed back up there to rip the RX-8 at the track. So, this week of crazy long nights and work isn't going to waste, and we're still gonna use the RX-8 at the track this weekend, because that's what we wanna do, and it fits best with my schedule to do it whenever I can kinda of choose versus them rescheduling that, and we just have to do it. So, the other thing that's gonna be crazy about today is my buddy Jacob, his Audi S4, yeah, it's like a 2002 or something, the one that blows up all the time, is a uh, is low compression. It's like blown up or blowing up in the process of. He did drive it here, but so he's not going to run his car on the track, and he's actually going to drive the RX-8 on the track. So the RX-8 is going to get two track days, one with two different drivers. So the next thing that we're going to do, and I'll show show you guys when we get there, is we're going to test some oil today. So I typically run part store brand oil, you know, in these cars. I change engines enough and change stuff around that most stuff doesn't see that many miles and stuff. Anyway. Anyways, there's a company called Renewable Lubricants that reached out to me a while back and wanted me to, to try some of their stuff and they sent some of their product out. So I've been running their premix, which is good, and I've been running their, or haven't been running their oil, but I have their oil to run today. The reason we're doing it today is because I'm not big on just like hopping over to some brand because they give you free stuff. Um, I would rather make sure that it's a good product that I like to use and that it's beneficial for, you know, my cars this that and the other. And I'm sure it's going to be better than the oil that I have in the car now, but we're going to see. So I've installed an oil temperature gauge in the RX-8 and we're going to do track in the morning sessions on the parts store oil and then we're going to switch to the renewable lubricants oil their uh, rotary 2050 premix or not the premix, the rotary 2050 racing oil and we're going to run that for the afternoon sessions so 
It might be a little warmer for those sessions than the morning sessions than whatever, but we'll see how the oil temps stack up and uh, just give us some data and then we'll see where it goes from there. So let's get to the track. Make it. All right, guys, welcome to In the Car. I'll talk to you now, maybe you can hear me because I didn't hook my microphone up just yet, but we'll do a short rip here. I've got parts brand oil in the thing. You guys probably can't see the oil temperature gauge. But uh, in the session before this, I was able to get like 246 on the oil temperature, so not too bad. Uh, coolant temps are working great, and then still chasing like a slight top end misfire. Um, so you'll see the flashy check engine light come on, but uh, it's fine, trust me. Car feels super good today. The exhaust sounds good. All right, guys, getting ready to head out on track for the first session. This exhaust just sounds so good, and I want to apologize right off the rip for Mr. Rad broke his suction cup mount and couldn't get his other camera mounted. So we're only going to roll with the helmet cam footage for now, and I'm not going to include a ton of track driving footage because. Well, the windage windshield's all washed out. You really can't see where we're at on the track. But listen to this RX-8 sing. This thing rips. It's been running good. And I'm excited for you guys to see the results of the oil testing in the video. It's, it's super good, and, and I'm real happy with how it came out. All right, guys, so hopefully we get more than three laps this session because the last session I literally got three laps because somebody else crashed their car. Um, and then in the first session, I only got three laps because somebody crashed their car then, too. So I've really only ran 10 laps today out of my first three sessions of the day, which is, you know, part of coming to a public track day is you got to deal with public people driving on the track for the first time. And everybody's been there, so don't be afraid to come out and do it. Um, and definitely learn and enjoy it because that's what we're here for trying to get more people involved in driving cars so this session we are on renewable lubricants 2050 race oil um i mean oil pressure looks good jacob reported that the oil temps were a little bit higher than before but it also is heating up outside so we probably would have seen higher oil temps right now anyways it's about 10 degrees warmer than it was earlier this morning so we'll see how it uh how it hangs up and if that's the case that's the case but uh, at least we did some definitive testing and we're running the oil so I can give you numbers on it Go. thank you go full send on the first lap guys no matter how much you want to catch the car in front of you on cold tires you'll never do it
his wing going up and down. up this guy's coming through this next section look at him he breaking before the two get a little bit of break take the corner at 95 look at that 96 new PR through that corner hard on the brakes look at this baby work all right we're gonna catch these next three cars You got me on the straights, bud. Let me pass, let me pass. I'm gonna catch all y'all. Me and my slow car, look at that. Right back up in your Wide open. Yeah. Dude, come on. All 
right, one pet peeve, guys, is everybody's track day pet peeve. If you're faster than somebody on a straightaway, doesn't mean you're faster than them all the way around the track. And this turn is a case in point with this. I could pass this guy right here. And then he's gonna break way more than me. And I'm gonna put it right up his and be like, yo, let me buy. You know? Because see, if it was advanced, which we're only running opposite groups so that Jacob can drive and I can, the car gets a little bit of a break. But I could overtake this guy. And then see, hear him lift right here? I drive these chicanes flat out. Well, I can't with him in front of me, but. Thanks, dude. You're gonna have to like let me go. I don't got the balls on the straights, but I'll leave your ass right here. Four, three, two, break. Downshift. Coming in the corner. A little hot right there. Yo, baby. Now we gotta catch these guys. Like he's got a chill back there on this straightaway, but I'll lose him again right here. Past the one, one and a half seconds of braking back into the throttle. You drive through this corner, we drive away from him. Breaking early, dude. Make some quick work of this Fiat. To the blue mark. One Mississippi and a half. Come through here. Yeah, buddy. to follow people through sketchy parts because if they spin out and you're gonna hit them so you kind of want to keep a little bit of a different line than them so that way should something happen you can get around them all right dude your car's fast so you gotta let me buy track. Get back in a rhythm here. Let's try to get one good clean lap. Got to really lurch the shift to get that extra torque thrust. Take her to the one. Give it a one and a half Mississippi, 95 miles an hour. Back in the gas. 97, 98 through there. Hard into the brakes. Oh, that's as much brakes as this thing has right there. Drive it in deep, that was upsetting. Let it rotate a little bit. Don't even shift to fourth right here, just bury it. Bury it in the limiter. Oh, come on. It like trash control freaked out. What the heck? Now 
97, no way it holds that. Holy shoot. I guess it has a little more braking right there than I can wheel out of it. That last lap, that was about as hard as I could push through that. Here the seat's getting sucky. Sliding all over this cloth seat. I think I dented my speaker cover. If this thing didn't have a dead pedal, we'd be like royally charged. Dude, you got nice tail lights, Mr. Golf. Oh, nice tail lights, but I'm right up your right up your No, you gotta go, I can't pass you here. Oh checkers. Dang it! I got some clean racing in, or clean laps in, but it seemed like I was always in traffic. slosh guys because it seemed to be pretty good right there so instead of blowing this thing up trying to drive through fuel slosh we're gonna call it a day because we're just below a quarter tank of gas and I really don't want to blow it up so I'd like this car to be good and I don't want to have to put an engine in it again that would just be a little worse so we definitely got some good rougher laps in hopefully I can hopefully my times are running and I can see what's happening but that should be close to the end of that session anyways. What a day at the track. The RX-8 pretty much performed flawlessly. There's really no better feeling in the car world than thrashing all week to get your car put back together. Taking it to the track, well, one, we got snowed out, but I transferred my track day day to the Sunday day, so I could just do it all in the same weekend. But taking it to the track, shredding it, i.e. having no mechanical sympathy for it, driving it on the trailer when you leave, driving it off the trailer when you get home, and starts, runs, leaks a little bit of oil, but other than that, is perfect. So... Highlights of the day. I threw some track day footage in there in this video some laps I didn't film anything in the paddock after the track day whenever I was there because it was literally Tornado alley windy and if you hadn't seen uh, The Corvette Museum in Bowling Green after the tornadoes went through there You know mad prayers out to those guys that really hurt that area early this year And you can see that Corvette Museum tracks tore up so stoked that they're still able to put on events and hopefully they get that thing fixed up but we're here back at the shop, and let's go over a few things that we did and the results of our oil comparison. So, I'm not going to tell you guys what exactly, I mean, you know what oil I put in my stuff, but Renewable Lubricants reached out to me a while back, and when I went up to Formula Drift Seattle, part of that trip was to meet up with their representative there and hang out with the Kyle Mohan guys and just get a feel for starting to get into that industry and kind of what 
the whole like YouTube and people helping each other out stuff looks like, you know, and just kind of see what everyone's expectations are. So after that conversation, they sent me some oil. So I've been running their premix in my cars, and this is the first time I've ran their 2050 racing oil. And one of the big things for me, just being an engineer and not being, um, just like take things at face value, basically, or at least I don't. I like to know or have a reason for doing something a certain way. I installed an oil temperature gauge in the RX-8, which I showed you. I wanted to test some sort of measurable thing that their oil is better at, right? It's one thing to run an oil because they give it to you for free, but it's another thing to run an oil because it's actually good, right? Um, or because it's cheap or whatever. So this oil, the last three sessions of the day, it was 15 degrees warmer, ambient air. The track, definitely probably 15 to 20 degrees warmer with the sun beating down on it, all the cars on it. Early sessions, part store brand, oil temps, 246, 248, highest I saw, okay, on the gauge. The gauge is on the oil cooler inlet from the back of the engine, so it should be the hottest oil coming out of the engine. Went to lunch, came back, changed the oil. Fresh, 2050, the hottest oil temps I saw, 254, 255. So we're talking... A whole temporal difference in the air, track temps totally different by a magnitude of 15 to 20 degrees, right? And only a 5 to 8 degree increase in oil temps. And I noticed that the renewable lubricants oil came down in temperature a lot faster than the O'Reilly brand oil whenever I would come off the track. So, that right there proves that this oil is better than the stuff you can get at the parts store. Um, and I'm mad appreciative of them for sending some of this out for me to try. I'm uh, excited. They're premix. I've given some of it to a few of my friends that run E85, and I'm waiting on getting some data back from them. I'd like to maybe throw a scope in one of their engines or just see if they're thinking it's burning cleaner, um, which it should. But I really don't have a definitive way to tell you that the renewable lubricants oil is like better. Like I don't have a way to measure that. Um, I know that you know based on just running like Walmart brand you know, or whatever two stroke, which is what I had been running in all my dailies. Cause I go through a lot of two stroke oil guys. I drive these things all the time, put lots of miles on my rotary cars. Um, and I burned through, this is my last quart from, from them. So I'll be buying more of this. Um, and I'll be starting to order some of their, their, uh, synthetic oil. Um, one of the things I really like about them is made in the USA, got the big flag on there. Um, and the guys there are just super cool, you know, and friends support friends. And I, and I really appreciate, you know, them helping out and I'm going to return the favor. So if you guys are in the market for some of this stuff, go check it out. Um, compare the prices, do what you got to do. I know most of us rotary guys, me included, very much on a budget. Um, so make sure it's right for you. I know it's a little bit better. And, and if you guys have experiences with it and have used this stuff, comment down below and tell me what you've noticed that's better. Um, I haven't built an engine, right? And specifically only ran a brand of oil through it and then seen how it compared wear-wise to somebody, to, to a different engine. You know what I mean? That's not really my job to do that, but that's where my head goes when I want to try different products. So it's trying to find different tests to do it with. But today was a test. I'm happy with it. We're going to keep running it in the RX-8 and see if the oil temps stay where they're supposed to be. I might tidy up the oil temperature gauge wiring at some point. And I'm, I'm just stoked that the week of videos, you guys loved them. You watched them. You know, everybody was, was commenting and, and I enjoyed the engagement with you guys on those videos. And, and you guys are what make all of this stuff possible. Um, I wouldn't be, you know, as much as RX-8s are cool, this is not like my dream track car by any means so whatever the things you guys want to see done to this car i really enjoy driving it not so much working on it so hopefully the engine doesn't you know give me any fits but as far as you know i'd like to go through clean the injectors do a coil upgrade i did have a little bit of some breakup you know on the top end um maybe do better shocks and uh some other things but i'm gonna make another video going through the things I would change to the car after a track day, upgrades, right? Starting to do upgrades on your RX-8 for the track. I think that's a great video to do. 
and I can sit down and walk you through some of the things I want to change on the car. So with that, I hope you guys enjoyed watching this thing get put together this week, the success of it coming out to the track and ripping, and I'm just amped that it survived. Um, not only to me, but my buddy Matt drove it for a session, and then my buddy Jacob, we he ran an intermediate two, and I ran an intermediate one, so we could we literally co-drove the car and ran ten sessions today, and it shredded. So with that, guys, thank you guys very much for watching. Definitely, if it's your first time on the channel, go check out the other videos on this car. Go check out the other videos on the rally car which we built and sold. Um, go check on check out any other of the rad formational videos to learn about these rotary engines. They're super cool. And I would love to have you guys subscribe to the channel and hopefully it's uh it's worth it to you. It is it is free and the support is huge, guys. It's it's awesome to see you guys enjoying the content and watching this stuff. And the more you guys enjoy it, the more of, of you that do watch it, the more videos you're gonna get. So Thank you guys again very much for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Keep it rad. Let me tell you, this exhaust sounds so good. It sucks that I don't have like epic camera setups to get epic microphone and exhaust noises. And today was pretty hectic with running the car twice and doing this, that, and the other. But we'll get good sound clips. We're going to another track day. We're going to take this thing to the tail of the dragon. And let's find the dog. I'll just cut to the dog coming up here. Come here. Hey, can you sit? Nice to meet you. You think the RX-8 did good today? Here, jump really high if you think the RX-8 did good today. Jump, 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 jump. Yeah, RX-8 did good. Peace, guys.